Hello, 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 hello. Say hello. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. This is Kitty Caps where I watch it with you because we in this together, honey. But before we start, I just want to say thank you for stopping by in the first place. It means the world to me. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let's get into it, okay? Let's get into The Impact of New York, Season 1, Episode 6. Things are getting weird. So opens up with Chinese Kitty and her stylist. Uh, and they immediately start talking about Cleo. She's having Chinese Kitty, and I don't know, something's wrong with her lip. It looked very strange. I guess she just, she just got her lip in the done at that point. But um, Chinese Kitty and them are talking about Cleo because Chinese Kitty is going to have a private listening party or something. And she's going to invite Cleo to be messy because she feel like you have um, issues with my stylist. You can come talk to him about it in person. And she's like, I mean, she's like, at this point, I just want you to give her the $1,000 because she's really bugging out over $1,000. I'm like, girl, when you bugging, over, bugging out over the budget that you couldn't afford for Dream Doll? Moving on. So then they're like, yeah, you remember she has some style allowance for a thousand. She's from Staten Island, so you know a thousand dollars for her is a big deal. Big deal. Like you still ain't give it. If a thousand dollars wasn't a big deal to you, you would have given it. I hate a thief that's gonna tell you broke when they stole you your money. What kind of? Um, I like Chinese Kitty's black all black confessional look. It's her best one thus far because her stylist is she ain't fire him. She ain't fire him because he can just stick to being her friend because the outfits is not giving what they're supposed to give you know what i'm saying they're talking about that and so she's like so he's like i bet you twenty thousand dollars that she ain't gonna show because she's scared of you and she don't want to face me because she know if she face me I, i'll pull out the receipts and i'll expose her and she's like and, if, he's like, and, and she said he said that i'm also gonna check her and her minion scott because everybody's gagging the one you want when they want when you should it he's like when you come into this city you gotta come check in on me and i'm like boy you know sit your down somewhere child Dream Doll and Scott meet up to talk about the whole situation about the, uh, they had like, you know, the little mountain ski trip that they had. You know, they have a cute little one too. Dream is so beautiful. And Scott wear the same outfits over and over again. But hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And they talk about the fact that they understood why Ella left because they was like, you know, if it was your main birthday, you should leave. But they was also like, if that was my main birthday, I wouldn't even came to be in where I would have told her, like, it's my man weekends so or my birthday weekends. So, uh, um, but then it was like, so Scott's like, but when I was on Instagram, I was looking at it, 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 it. He said, I seen Ella, and then I also seen to her right was uh Ashley and her BD because Ashley said she loved because she didn't go take care of her baby because her mama didn't want to keep watching the baby. But then they boom, 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 flash forward to Milani. Who about this? Say, girl, Milani. Oh, thank you. Milani and Ashley are talking and she's like um she's like she's like yeah so I went I was gonna go home and take you know and pick up my kid but then I saw my baby daddy and he went to the party and then you know we, we didn't we didn't even get home until 6 a.m but basically I came back 6 a.m to take my kids to the work so it was like you lied you just lied. You should have just said that I'm going with Ella because we had made plans to go to the go to her, go to the party together. And it also sounds like Loki she has an issue with Dream Dog. Lonnie's just like, um, girl, that's a little weird. Doll is like, she don't know if the girls just didn't want to be there or if they don't like her, especially because you know Ashley had told her that I want to call her Elsa. Ellie, Ellie, Ella then like the comment that they had made about her being messy. So it feels like. And Dream Doll thing in Dream Doll's eyes that Ashley is just treating her some type of way because Ella don't like her. I don't remember how Ashley was bragging that she was saying because her man is Muslim. He's so traditional. Well, he ain't that traditional because y'all out partying to five, six in the morning, drinking, knowing y'all got to go pick, take y'all daughter to work at six a.m. Not a word. Take y'all daughter to school at six a.m. That's not very traditional to me. I forgot to mention that Ashley says that she feel like Dream Doll be wanting people to kiss her booty and that's kind of thing. Her and you can tell that Ashley and Ella talk about Dream Doll behind the bed. I feel like they're kind of jealous of her because 
they don't have no real reason to not like her. So they Ashley, Dream Doll, and no, not Ashley, Dream Doll, Ella, and Chinese Kitty go to this thing. They're like, I want you to take me to that. We go to New York. They have tea around town, and it's really cute. And they have tea, and it's like one of those like little touristy bus, but it's tea. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I'm sure they can have coffee. Anyway, so they talk about that. And yeah, so she's like, yeah, you were just being weird. You disappeared. I'm like, maybe she was tired. Like a host, I'm the type of host. I'm gonna give you time by yourself. I'm gonna be with you, but I'm also give you time by yourself. You know, like, like let me rest. It's exhausting being a host. So she was like, yeah, I feel like you was gonna have fun when you left. Y'all just, you just didn't want us there. I'm like, you're very insecure, Ella. Clearly, like you just don't like her. You're just looking for reasons to not like the girl. That's the vibe that you're giving. Uh, yeah. And so, and I'm just like, why you keep calling her weird? Why you call her weird? I think y'all just didn't like her and y'all didn't want to be there. And so, Chinese Kitty reveals, she invites them to her single release party at Star- Scarlet's or Starlet's or who know, I don't know how to, whatever it's called. And she's like, and then a drink girl's like, can I invite, El- uh, can I invite Cleo? And she's like, of course, I want you to invite her. Chinese Kitty is still pretending like she don't just like Cleo for no random reason. The same reason why Ella and Dr- Ella and Ashley don't like Dream Doll is the same reason why Chinese Kitty don't like Cleo. No reason at all. Just for some reason, there's some like feeling of jealousy there. So the episode, we, the whole point is to end up at Chinese Kitty's, um, what's this thing called? To end up at Chinese Kitty's single release party. And so when they get everybody showed up shows up except for Ellie and Cleo. Cleo's in the studio. She's like, why would I show up to some girl that's not even gonna apologize to me about throwing a drink on me? Eh. She she's so she's in it. She has a song with Asian doll. You see her with Cuban doll. She's doing her thing. I'm really proud of her. Also, Milani has a uh, acting uh, acting, uh, acting casting, and she did so good. You would think that she wasn't gonna do that good because of how she was acting, like pre, you know, because she was kind of in her own little goofy character before she went into the audition. And when she got in there, she killed it. I was like, yes, honey, I'm so she's a star. I'm so happy to see some of them like actually doing stuff and not just saying they're gonna do stuff. That was nice. So that went really well for her. I was really happy for her, and she seemed so humble and just so real. But fast forward to i'm eating cheese fast forward to chinese kitties um ting release which we don't hear no music until whatever for a long time child uh, the episode ends and you don't hear no music for her. but it says starlet is where her and dream dong both you know got they start from and right off the bat they get into it but they i mean teen chinese kitty and everybody else so tiny kitty because Cleo doesn't show up, she can't get into it with Cleo. But her her manager is there, not her manager, her stylist is there to get into it with Scott. And so he's like, I don't, I just didn't like the way you came in and you tried to shoo me away. And I'm like, well, you got up real quickly when he said, can I have a conversation with her? Because he said it nicely. And it was Chinese Kitty that told you to sit down. It's pointed out there. You weren't protesting like that in the morning. You was clearly ready to leave because he came in there nicely. And he was just like, I don't like how you try to tr- tr- check her and address her. She's a woman, blah, blah, blah. And then he's trying to like aff- like be offensive and say, you know, I don't know about you, but I have I work for real clean listen to one client bes- <laughs> besides the one next to him. And Scott lets me know, he was like, yeah, you buy your clothes and then try to make them fit your your um, clients. That's why you don't want to give um, Cleo her thousand dollars back because you ain't got the thousand dollars. He's like, it's no refund, which is crazy because it's like, if she never got her product, you should have to give her a refund. I don't, I don't think that that's how that works anywhere. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, but whatever. He's like, you buy your stuff and then try to make it fit. I get my stuff directly from the brands. I ain't never had. I always have clothes. I ain't never had to go through the end. What he want to say is, I give refunds, okay? But before they can really, really, really have a gay off, Dream Doll walks in, and boom. They start talking, I guess, kind of like the vibe about how people was leaving at the um at the ski party, cause eventually, oh, cause yeah, so who who come in? What's her name? Ashley comes in, and Ashley's already got an attitude, cause she don't like. I think that they're really dre- jealous of Dream Doll. If I'm honest, I don't know why. Maybe she's the most successful one to them, but they're definitely jealous of her, cause she has no real reason to not like Dream Doll. 
Like, who wouldn't be offended that you come to my event and then lie and come up with an excuse and say, oh, I got to be, be there to take care of my kid. And then whole time you want, you just want to go party. All you had to do is be honest and say, I want to go party. You would have to lie. Like, I would be upset too because it's just about having some decorum and some class. Which she doesn't. She has no class because you can tell how she's addressing her and saying she's weird. Blah, blah, blah. And then fast forward, Milani and Dream are talking to each other, right? And so this uh, class is helpful. Walk up there, Miss. Um, I'm traditional and I wanna, I wanna be masculine, whatever. She walk. She's like, cause she had a conversation with Scott, and Scott, you know, he messy, so he like to be a little mediator. So he was telling her like, is everything okay with us? I can feel that you have a little bit of energy with Dream, and so. She goes straight from the conversation to interrupt Dream and Milani having a conversation. She's like, Dream, Dream. I'm like, girl, you don't see they talking? Which is funny because when they're arguing, when they're having a conversation, her and Dream, she's like, stop interrupting me. Stop interrupting me. I'm like, you interrupt the whole conversation. And I'm so happy that Milani and Dream ignored her until they finished their conversation. Because that was rude. That was so rude and not cute at all. Boom. She has no real reason to not like Dream. She said that she drinks Dream one all. Wants everybody to kiss her booty. And I'm like, can you give us one valid reason why you don't like this girl? And she has every right to be annoyed that you left her party for no reason. When she took the time to put it together, all I had to do is say, well, I didn't want to come. You and your friend, Cleo, don't like her. And nothing she does will ever be good enough in your eyes. So, yeah. Mean girls. Definitely mean girls. You're giving lap dog tally. Or Ella, whatever the heck her dang old name is. But that's how the episode ends was her. And Dream Tom, well, she was trying to get into it with Dream Tom, but Dream Tom, like, walked away. She just could not. She was like, I don't have time for that. I'm, like, getting into beef. I want more for my life. A lot of people still don't like Dream Tom for what she did on Bad Girls Club, and I get that. I would, You should never forget that because that's, you know, still a testament to somebody's character. But I really feel like Dream Tom has grown a lot. Like, a lot, in my, my opinion. How y'all feel about the season so far? I'm really liking the show the show i like the show and if you do let me know down in the comments am i wrong about the situation between ashley ella and dream doll like i don't feel like i'm wrong <clears throat> right and how y'all feel about cleo not getting a dang on refund do you think she justified but i'm trying to get to 100 subscribers so make sure you tell a friend tell a friend tell a friend so click on my channel and subscribe. It's free. And if you are feeling extra, 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 extra generous, click the link in my description box and donate to my cat now fun. But until next time, hope you have a lovely, 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 lovely rest of your February. Mwah.